Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new, welcome. My name is Adelina, and I make videos about living in this tiny house on wheels and living a more intentional life. Today is going to be a quick video, but I just wanted to go over something that I think is really important. And I've touched on a little bit in other videos, um, but I haven't gone deeper into it. And today I want to talk about safety inside the tiny house, in particular fire safety. Because obviously every home needs to have um, a plan for dealing, if they're dealing with a fire in the kitchen, in the utility room or something like that. Um, tiny homes are very small so things can go up fast and um, I think that it's really important to have something in place. I also think that everything that I'm talking about today applies to an RV, a motorhome, or a camper van. So I have these things in my camper van in Vanuela as well because I always worry about that situation. So I want to just sort of go over some of the things that I have in Serendipity, my tiny house, that give me peace of mind that if something should happen, I've got uh, a plan in place, some things in place that um, will allow me to exit the house if I can't put out the fire, get out safely, um, and make sure that Sophie and I are okay. Yeah. So. so the first thing I'm gonna say is I'm not an expert. And these are just the things that I have. They're just things that I think are smart pretty common sense and there's one product here that you, or mm, two I guess that you might not know about so let's sort of go over the first line of defense which is alert detectors so I have two um, smoke detectors in the tiny house there's one right here just in the front entry on the roof and there's another one on the roof on the stairwell up into the bedroom both of those smoke detectors are also carbon monoxide detectors. They are hardwired into the house with battery backups and I change those batteries um, twice a year. Whenever the time changes, <laughs> I change those batteries whether they need it or not because I want to always be sure that they're working whether there's electricity to the house or not. Sophie does not like when I test those at all but I think it's really important. The house has propane appliances. The stove is propane and the furnace, the Dometic 40,000 BTU furnace is uh, propane. Those are the only two propane appliances. However, there is propane coming into the house. So under my desk, I have a propane detector. And I think that is really important because propane is heavy gas. It will also settle down towards the floor that propane detector is also a carbon monoxide detector. That one is hardwired in. So those are the detectors that are in the tiny house that give me a lot of peace of mind. <laughs> That's the smoke detectors. Not only do they beep, but they also talk. And they're very annoying because they'll talk, they'll talk, beep, beep, and it's very loud. And yes, I have set them off a couple of times when I have burnt some toast. <laughs> And because the house is so small and this was in the winter time and the windows weren't open and so I had to be opening the doors and windows um, so I know they work and they're quite sensitive uh, but that's okay because if there's a fire I want to know about it and uh, a little bit of embarrassment when I happen to burn something is worth it. My tiny house the bedroom is in the gooseneck and so the bedroom is only about seven eight feet the window is probably about eight eight and a half feet uh, from ground level and because the house was built to code one of those windows is an egress window so um, the I can't remember how you what you call it the awning windows the ones that go this way is the one big window on this side of the tiny house and on this side of the tiny house it's one that opens this way I should know the term for that this one <laughs> but I don't feel free to put it down in the comments below but that is the egress window. Now I could get out of both of them, but um, that is the safety sort of feature for the bedroom. The loft in this tiny house 
also has an egress window. I wanted two awning windows in the loft so I could leave them open in the winter. In fact, I wanted all the windows in the tiny house to be awning windows, but I was not allowed to have two awning windows in the bedroom or in the loft because they ha one had to be an egress window, big enough for an adult human to get through uh, easily. And that on this side is a slider. So now the loft is quite a bit higher, so that's probably at about 12 feet high. Um, so if you were to jump out of there, you might hurt yourself jumping out of there. But I don't have a bedroom up there. My bedroom is on the gooseneck. So I'm not worried about jumping out that window and hurting myself. I can scooch out, turn around, drop down and be quite safe. I can drop Sophie out of that window and not worry about her too much. Um, so I'm okay. When I had my townhouse before I built the tiny house, it was two stories above a garage. So the bedrooms upstairs were quite a different distance down to the ground and even to the balcony on the main level. It was quite a drop. So there I had a safety ladder that I had bought at the safety supply store. I, um, they weren't, it wasn't inexpensive, but it was worth it. And it was one of those, it was all sort of strapped together with hooks and it would hook over the edge of the window. And when you let it go, and it was long enough to reach the ground. And that was peace of mind for me because I always worried when the kids were upstairs and when they were little in particular, but if there was a fire on the main level and I couldn't get down those stairs, how was I going to get out? How was I going to get the kids out? And that's why I got that safety ladder. So if you have a tiny house or any house and the bedrooms are upstairs and there's, there's no, uh, like, uh, uh, what do they call it? Um, not fire extinguisher you know, those ladders that slide down. Put that down below <laughs> in the comments as well. I can't remember what it's called, but uh, then you're gonna wanna get something like that if you have a tiny house where your bedroom is up in the loft. Probably not a bad idea to have one of those as well, especially if you have young children, but even if you don't, because that's quite a jump down. So I don't have one of those here in the tiny house, but I would highly recommend having something like that if your bedroom is up high, too high for you to comfortably jump down without the risk of really hurting yourself or if you have young children. Okay, I've brought you closer because I want to show you these other items. Now, I don't think this is gonna be a surprise to anybody or something that most people haven't seen. This is a fire extinguisher. You can find these at any uh, home, like Home Depot, Rev, uh, Rona, things like that, or safety supply stores, or on Amazon. The important thing to remember about these is that they have a little meter there and a gauge, a little gauge there. And you wanna look at this on a regular basis and make sure that that little arrow is in the green zone, because if it's not in the green zone, then this isn't pressurized. And when you need it, it won't work. And that's really important. So if you're gonna be replacing your batteries in your smoke detectors twice a year, which I recommend, then you should also be checking this at the same time. And if it is not in the green zone, then this needs to be taken to the fire department to dispose of safely, and you need to buy yourself another one. Also, Learn how to use it, watch some videos, so that when you have a fire in your house is not the time you're trying to figure out, oh my gosh, how do I use this? How do I pull this tab? What do I do with this? How do I spray? You want to know before you need it, because when you're in a panic and your adrenaline is pumping, is not the time to be <laughs> trying to read these tiny little uh, directions. So these ones are a little bit bigger, but still, you're not gonna be able to read that if it's dark and smoky. So watch a bunch of videos. And if you've got one of these and it has uh, not pressurized properly, then go into your backyard and practice undoing the, the pin and you know using it because it's your opportunity to use it because it's useless anyways for an emergency. So I have one of these in the house. It actually, the builder actually put it in. It was on a bracket right by my front door and I've taken it off the bracket because it was on the wall. I didn't like it, but it is sitting by my front door. 
and I also have one of these it's a slightly smaller but this style in the van in the van I also have a carbon monoxide and smoke detector it's battery operated it's really loud I made the mistake one time of changing the battery and testing that inside the house and it totally freaks out Sophie so much she was on my bed she actually peed so I no longer test that inside the house but I have since bought something else that I think is just a little bit more convenient for the van and I've also also for the house and it's one of these it looks like a big can of, of bear spray just a regular spray small easy to use easy to find this one is rated for grease fires uh, as well as everything else and this is going to be something that should probably be in your van in your vehicle any vehicle should probably have one of these just in case this one's really easy to use now it's not going to last that long when you're spraying but it'll give you uh if it's a small fire it'll be get you give you the ability to put it out and or give you the ability to get out of the house so these easy spray fire extinguishers are so awesome because you're not trying to figure out how to pull this pin how to get this to work what to do you're just it's like a can of hairspray or a great big can of bear spray no excuse not to have one of these in the kitchen and that's where this one is in the kitchen under the sink um, and then I have one in the van <laughs> as well maybe overkill but hey you know I can keep the big one in the basket now under the bed uh, in case I come across something and I keep this one in the the kitchen just in one of the little holders in the kitchen area so very easy to use so fire extinguishers are the next sort of option let's talk about things like grease fires so many people um, say well you can just put a lid on it or you can put baking <laughs> baking soda on it watch some videos they're put out by fire departments and they're so interesting putting a lid on a, a grease fire is not easy without burning yourself or potentially catching yourself on fire and you need a lot of baking soda to put out a grease fire a lot more than most people have in their house so those are not real options so I just sort of want to put that out there and dispel that myth so I'm going to talk about a fire blanket now I love these I've never had the opportunity sorry I've never had the occasion to need to use any of these thankfully and I'm very grateful for that I will knock on wood but I've always worried about things like a grease fire or um, what happens if there's a fire and I need to get through it to get to somebody or get out of the house or the van <clears throat> so I've been doing a lot of research on these fire blankets so what these are are fire retardant blanket they're fire retardant material you can hang them on the wall <clears throat> and then when you need it you just pull these tabs down and you pull the blank the blanket out the bank blanket is, is I don't even know how to describe it it feels like a webbing but it's fire retardant you have a fire on your stove or even in your stove you pull this blanket out open it throw it over the fire it extinguishes it there's no mess from your uh, fire the spray fire extinguisher there's no splatter there's no worry about catching yourself on fire if you needed to run through a place a spot that was on fire in order to get out safely you could wrap this around you or your children um, and so I think these are incredible they're reusable if you need it you can reuse it <laughs> after you've put out a fire fold it up put it back in here put it back in your cupboard this is under my sink and there's one in the van <laughs> of course there is because if there's a fire in the van a fire extinguisher even this little one is going to make a hell of a mess if I've just caught something that I'm cooking on fire and I would much rather use this I can throw this over it extinguish it immediately and not worry about it spreading clean easy anybody can use it you don't need to read the instructions other that it's pretty self-explanatory pull this get the blanket out throw it over it I ended up buying a two-pack off of Amazon and I'll link that down below um, 
but you can find them at safety supply stores. Fire departments will often sell fire extinguishers and things like that. I couldn't find these at Canadian Tire or Home Depot or anything like that. So I don't know why, um, but it's, I think one of the smartest things I've ever seen. Uh, the first time I saw it, I thought it was brilliant. And then I kept thinking about it and thinking about it and hoping I could find one here and not have to order. Um, and then eventually I just ordered one because I kept thinking to myself, I'll be thinking about this, thinking about this. I'll have a fire and wishing I hadn't just thought about it. I'd actually bought it. So fire blanket. I think this is probably the, the easiest to use. Even your children can use this. You just go over the instructions. It's pretty self-explanatory. You could put one of these in every kid's room. They're not expensive. There's zillions of manufacturers and, um, like what a peace of mind knowing that there's one of these on every floor or in every person's bedroom. I just can't say enough about these, but I would say there's no excuse <laughs> for not having fire extinguishers of whatever type, making sure that whichever one you have in your kitchen is rated for a grease fire because most likely that's what's going to be, what's going to catch on fire. Fire blankets, on, in every bedroom uh, or at least in every floor. I think that these two should be in your vehicle, whether it's a camper van or not. And make sure that your detectors, your smoke detectors, your carbon monoxide detectors, uh, propane detectors, whatever, are in the right spots and have fresh batteries. It's always a good idea to have them hardwire in, but put batteries in them as well. You probably know all of this stuff. You may already have these things in your house in your vehicle and i think that's awesome if you have uh, a kid who's just getting their license and their own vehicle you know a safety kit road safety kit with uh flares and the little triangles and all that sh is a great gift also these you know what it makes you a great christmas present and you know christmas is coming so plan ahead. So I just want to say thank you for watching. If you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe. I have set myself a goal to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, which is totally doable because 50% of my viewers are not subscribers and I don't understand why. So if you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with somebody you think might like it, especially this topic I think would be really useful to share. Uh, Sophie and I are doing well. It's uh, Labor Day long weekend here and actually Monday is my birthday. So uh, you could give me a birthday present by subscribing if you're not. <laughs> that would be awesome. See, Sophie thinks so too. Come back over here. Come back over here. Yeah. Anyways, guys. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're staying safe. Remember in a world where you can be anything, be kind. I love you and I'll see you next time. Hey, you're in my way. Hey, you're in my way. <laughs> as soon as I get up, she gets in my chair.